Denise Mazzola from Everything Dog. Welcome back to this week's 10 minute tip. Please be sure you hit subscribe, hit the gray bell, uh, and I'd like you to love you to leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up or a like button um, so that we know that you are enjoying what we're doing. And, it, and if you want to hear, other, hear about other things, please leave that in the comments as well. Okay, so today's 10 minute tip is going to be about Dr. Ian Dunbar's bite scale. So this is a bite scale that, um, I'm talking about a dog bite scale, so that trainers, veterinary behaviorists, and individuals that are working with aggressive dogs have a way to rate a dog bite. Like what, what's the seriousness of it? And it also helps us talk to dog owners about the liability that they might be facing, um, the risk that they might be taking, or that there's really not a risk at all and we can kind of take a deep breath and relax a little bit. We are going to put the uh, link in the comments below so that you can have access to the PDF. It's readily available on the internet. It's not, um, it's not a secret. Okay, there are six levels and I am going to go through those. I don't have them memorized. There's six levels. So level one, it goes from level one, which is obnoxious, aggressive behavior, but there's no dog teeth on human skin, okay? to level six where the individual has died. Okay, so that's, that's quite a difference. Level two is skin, skin contact by teeth, but there's no puncture, okay? And what this is telling us, like when I work with somebody whose dog is, is, has, maybe it's bitten, maybe he's, he or she has not bitten yet, but there's posturing, there's um, growling, whatever. Um, what this tells me is how much pressure is the dog using with their mouth and their jaws. Most dogs have the capacity to break bone with their jaws, right? Most dogs do. My yellow lab certainly does if he wanted to assert that amount of pressure. And the whole point of keeping, there's, there's two things, keeping puppies with their litter mates is so that they learn, they start to learn bite inhibition. They start to learn, ooh, if I use too much pressure, then my litter mates won't play with me anymore, okay? Puppies also come perfectly packaged with needle sharp teeth. And the reason they have needle sharp teeth is so that very little pressure is required before you feel pain, I feel pain, or another dog feels pain, right? We go, ow, oh, ugh, whatever. So, so their puppies come perfectly packaged to learn bite inhibition. If there is a singleton puppy, which means uh, there was only, it was the only puppy in the litter for whatever reason, those puppies need to get exposure to other puppies as quickly and as safely as possible in terms of shots and all that sort of stuff. But because they need to learn the best way to learn bite ambition is with your same species, with is with, with, which is with your siblings, your other puppies in your litter. And if you're a singleton and you don't have that, then um, there's a risk that they will not learn bite inhibition and they will use a lot of pressure when they are being mouthy. So most young dogs are mouthy, right? That's kind of one of the biggest calls I get. Oh, my puppy this or my puppy that with their mouth. They're exploring their world with their mouth, right? That's perfectly natural. And, and they're learning what works and what doesn't work. And we want them to learn, hey puppy, just a little bit of pressure is all that you need. We don't, we don't want you to use too much pressure. Okay, so that's how bite inhibition gets developed, hopefully. But there are certainly dogs that for whatever reason, uh, didn't necessarily get that and they use a lot of pressure. So the more pressure a dog uses in a bite situation, the more damage will be done, okay? And that's what Ian Dunbar's scale is measuring. And as a trainer going into your home and talking to you about your dog, I'm gonna ask you those questions where on, let's say your dog is biting you, where on your body did your dog bite you? What was the damage? So again, behavior's not random. Dogs don't accidentally bite you in the face. I'm not accidentally going to hit you in the face unless I'm just waving my arms around talking and you walk by and you know, as I do that and I, and I clobber you in the face, okay? That's not what I'm talking about though. Like I'm not randomly walking up to people and punching them in the arm or punching them in the head. 
right? Because my behavior is not random. Like I am in control of what I'm doing. And so is your dog. So a lot of times people will call and say, oh, he didn't mean to, or it was a mistake. Um, he missed, he nipped. I'm like, mm, you know, it, it's, that's not necessarily true because behavior is not random. Your dog knows where his mouth is, just like we know where our hands are. I'm not spilling my cup of tea because I'm right because I don't know where my hand is. I know where it is and I know that it's holding a cup of tea and I know that I'm not going to be waving it around too much, right? Okay, so with all that being said, let's go over the bite scale. Level one is obnoxious behavior. There may be posturing, the dog may be growling, but there is no teeth on skin. The dog has not put his or her teeth on anybody's skin. That's level one. That's that's like a lot of puppy stuff. Um, you know, maybe a hyper aroused dog, that kind of thing. Level two is their skin contact by teeth, but no skin punctures. Okay. Uh, th there may be skin nicks. That's, you know, they're not very deep and a slight bleeding caused by forward or lateral movement of teeth against skin, but no vertical punctures. Okay. And according to Dr. Dunbar, 99% of dog incidences are going to be a level one and a level two. Like, like you're probably not going to call, you may not even call somebody for help if your dog is just being obnoxious like this. Okay. But then we get to level three and there's a total of six. So one is obnoxious behavior. No teeth have touched a human skin. And level six is death, right? So pretty serious. So right in the middle is level three. I, I would say that the majority of people that I see with dogs that are having issues are a level three. So a level three is one to four punctures from a single bite. Okay, so a bite and let go. <laughs> the dog goes about their business. Um, with no puncture deeper than half the length of the dog's canine tooth. So if this is the dog's tooth, you know, we don't want the whole tooth going into your skin. You want just a little bit going into the skin, right? So the more pressure means the deeper the puncture, the more, uh, the more the dog's tooth will go into flesh, actually. So that is level three, one bite. So it's a single bite, no punctures, deeper than uh, half the length of the dog's tooth, maybe lacerations in a single direction. Okay, so not like the dog hasn't bit and shook back and forth. Okay, and it's most likely caused because the victim might have pulled their arm away, pulled their leg away, or if it's a little dog, then the dog might have like bit and dragged off. Okay, and that would cause some lacerations on, on skin as well. The age of the individual, if we're talking about a bite to a person, is important because an, an older elderly person's skin is a little more fragile and they're going to tear, that skin is going to tear a little bit more easy. So that could be a problem. All right. Uh, level four, more, much more serious now. One to four punctures from a single bite with at least one puncture deeper than half the length of ca dog's canine tooth. You can have bruising around the wound, right, which indicates the dog bit and hung on, bit and applied pressure. Um, lacerations in both directions, the dog might have shook back and forth. That's level four. Okay, so that's a lot more serious. Level five is a multiple bite incident with at least two level four bites or multiple attack incident. So what that means is that a, a level four or a level, a level five is a multiple strike bite. The dog bit, 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 bit and came back, uh, pursued the person right? Much more serious. And as I said, level six is, is the victim has died. So level fours and level fives are much harder to work with those dogs, right? It's a, your liability is exponentially um, higher. So look in the comments below and you will see, you can um, get this, uh, you can get this scale. If you're, if you're sort of struggling with this and your dog is, um, if you're worried about your dog's biting or your dog has already bit, then you can take a look at this scale and sort of help determine yourself, like, what, you know, how serious is this situation? If you have any questions, please post those in the comments below, and I will be happy to get on and chat with you uh, through the comment section. And it's kind of a serious topic, but we need to talk about these things because dog aggression does not seem to be getting any better, at least not in my line of business. I'm seeing more and more of that, and I want to educate all of you guys so that you know what you're really um, dealing with and um, how to sort of assess it for yourself 
if you're working with a trainer, they should absolutely know about this. And if they don't, then you might want to think about, you know, finding somebody else that can help you. Okay, you guys. So today's 10 minute tip all about Dr. Ian Dunbar's bite scale, bite inhibition, how to, what it is, how to, how to sort of rate your dog bites so you know how serious and what you're doing, what you're dealing with. Hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit like, give us a comment. We would love to chat with you. And until next week, I'm Denise Mazzola. I'll see you again.